Album retrati, l'ura fismir, l'ura Lura attila tu l-aħar parti tal-program ta'na tal-lum, The Knights of St. John. Palma diġa rajna, zemmer ġaw naraw l-Gran Mastru, Fraen Roberti, se naraw ħanki ġaw a San Juan, ġaw al-Kon Katedral ta' San Juan. Kon Katedral li mux bis jisebba hil-fajizna, mux bis jattira mont ta' turisti, imma katedral illi tant u tant jieġu vizitaturi, turisti, biex jaraw, jaraw dana il-ġojjel partikolari ta' pajjizna. Xalli immorru biex naraw din it-tira tu l-aħħar parti ta' dan il-dokumentari. Over 5,000 years old, Malta lies in the Mediterranean Sea, halfway between Europe and Africa. The Knights arrived here in the early 16th century, and Malta abounds with their massive urban buildings, in the fortifications they built to guard their harbors, and in a city of their design. The Knights left their last permanent impression on civilization here. Valletta is a bouquet of their final flowering. The Knights were divided by the languages they spoke. Each nationality built itself an auberge or residence. they erected a great house for the Grand Master. These palaces survive today and give the city an architectural distinction which rivals cities many times its size. The Order of St. John ruled supreme here for nearly 270 years. Under the discipline of the warrior monks, Malta emerged into fame and opulence. The knights instilled the magic of their era in the beauty of their art, in the Baroque churches, and in their cathedrals. On a map of the world, Malta is no larger than a speck of dust. Yet on the horizons of history, it looms grand indeed. In 62 AD, St. Paul brought Christianity to Malta. I am Father John Azzopardi from Rabat, Malta here. and I am a canon of this collegiate chapter. We are at St. Paul's Grotto, the core of Christianity in Malta, a sacred spot where uh, St. Paul lived when he was under arrest for three months in Malta. In all the old documents, this church, which is very old, has been referred to as St. Paul outside the walls because the Roman city, which extended to here, had a ditch, and St. Paul had one of these caves 
where he was held. So it is a very sacred spot which has been visited throughout the ages by hundreds and thousands of scholars, visitors, pilgrims. The last important one of which was Pope John Paul II when he was here in 1990. The place has been very dear also to the Knights of St. John. The Knights of St. John, when they came to Malta in 1530, did their very best to have this sanctuary under their possession. It served them for several purposes. First of all, out of deep devotion, because the order was a religious order. Grand Master Alof de Winyakor did all his best to acquire St. Paul's Grotto together with the Church of St. Paul's Bay under his possession, because it gave him the opportunity to enter into the heart of the Maltese people and to have something apostolic, to have something connected with the visit and with the presence of an apostle in the counter-reformation era was very important, very prestigious. There had always been the belief that there was a place for women in the tradition of the orders of chivalry. The convent of the Blessed Gerard maintained a hospital for women, as well as an order of nuns. I am the mother prior, and my name is Sister Lucia Aquilina. Our monastery was built in 1583 by Grand Master Vidala. We descend from a convent in Spain. The Spanish order was established when the knights were on roads. They wore the eight-pointed white cross and took vows of obedience to the master of the hospital. When roads fell, the nuns changed the color of their habit from red to black. Seven years after the fall of Rhodes, Emperor Charles V granted Malta and its dependencies to the Order of St. John of Jerusalem. Survivors of the Crusades, the Hospitallers had gone from a nursing brotherhood to a military order, from a land-based defensive power to a sea-based offensive power. They had outlived the other military orders and now they would stand as Europe's last defense against the Ottoman Empire. The rock on which Fort St. Angelo is built has always commanded the Great Harbor. In ancient times, the great temple of the goddess Astarte stood here. Seven hundred years before Christ, the Greeks drove the Phoenicians from Malta, and three hundred years later were in their turn driven out by Hannibal of Carthage. The Romans dispossessed the Carthaginians and were in their turn succeeded by the Byzantines. By 870 AD, the Arabs held the island and built a castle on this rock. They used the original temple for the foundation of the walls. The Knights of St. John arrived 500 years later, in 1530, and Grand Master Delil Adam established his residence and headquarters in the castle's great house. The Grand Master knew that Fort St. Angelo would be the bedrock of the Christian defense. The Knights lost no time in seeing to their defenses. They knew the Turks would not rest until the order had been driven out of Malta. Towering bastions and batteries were constructed to provide a platform from which the order's heavy guns could defend the harbor entrance. The Knights were rebuilding Fort St. Elmo when the Turkish Armada was sighted. They had run out of time.
Grand Master Fra Jean Lavalette was considered by the Turkish commander Dragut to be the greatest soldier of his time. Having 50 years in the service of the order, he resigned himself that the knights must not look to others for their deliverance. It was only on God and their swords they could rely. The Siege of Malta is one of the greatest epics of military history. The knights had two advantages absent on roads. The bareness of Malta and the Turkish lines of communications were stretched so far that they could not lay siege through winter. The island must be reduced in a single summer campaign. The Ottoman Turkish force of 40,000 men landed on May 19th. Those at Lavalette's command, 540 knights, 400 Spanish troops, and some 4,000 Maltese. Against a large army with all the machineries of siege, their chances were almost hopeless. Yet it was the knight's achievement to defend these positions for almost four months. <laughs> seemed lost, but the firing stopped, and the Turks retired. The news of the death of the Turkish commander, Dragut, reached the Grand Master through a deserter. There would be another three months of dying and destruction, but the loss of Dragut broke the spirit of the Turkish forces. the landing of a small relief force, siege was broken. The sovereign military and hospitaller order of the Knights of St. John, Jerusalem and Rhodes are now the Knights of Malta the bulwark of Christendom. St. John's Co-Cathedral is the final resting place for the fallen knights of the Great Siege. I'm Joe Gallia Naudi, curator of St. John's Museum. At the present, we are in the oratory of the Co-Cathedral of St. John. This is an extension of the uh, Co-Cathedral, uh, the oratory which was built 30 years after the conventual church of the order was built. That means it was built in 1603. Originally, when this oratory was built, it was very plain, built in limestone, quarried from this very same area, where at present there's a crypt of the Knights of St. John. And it was about 80 years later that the oratory was decorated as we see it at the moment. The first painting to be placed in this oratory was the large canvas depicting the beheading of St. John the Baptist, a picture by Michelangelo Merisi da Caravaggio. Most of the decoration of this hall was done by Mattia Preti. It was all done within a matter of, let's say, one decade. But we also have other pictures in the oratory, a number of 
smaller mural paintings, the uh, pilasters inlaid with precious marbles, and also the ceiling of the oratory as well. The altar was made in Rome and it was donated to the church by Grandmaster Gregorio Caraffa. It's a rather important workmanship in marble. The central roundel on the altar is by Ciro Perry. Uh, but we also have another Caravaggio painting, Saint Jerome. Saint Jerome is half undressed. Uh, it's Grandmaster Winyakur himself who's actually posing for, uh, or as I should say, Saint Jerome. This is Monsignor Carmelo Bianco, director of this church. This magnificent temple, I would like to call it, which uh, was the conventual church of the Knights of Malta. And besides this church, there are so many chapels in it. Uh, the Order of St. John was formed of langues, they used to call them, languages. And each language had its own chapel. For example, on this side I have got the one dedicated to Spaniards. On the other side there have got the chapel of St. Catherine, which was dedicated to Italians, you see. The church was decorated by Mattia Preti, a well-known and renowned painter also was made afterwards a night by the, by the order of St. John. Most of the knights whose memorial tablets are placed on the floor here were members of Europe's most illustrious families of the 17th and 18th centuries. One can actually say that the, the history of Europe is really depicted in the floors of the co-cathedral. Externally, the church is comparatively simple, but the interior is glorious. The entire far-reaching unbroken floor is laid close with the marble tombs of the knights. They are blazoned and lettered and many colored. The tombs are assembled in so regular a pattern that the effects suggest the floor of a mosque carpeted with prayer rugs. It's something unique, I think. I have been all over the world practically. I have never seen a church which is overlaid completely with marble slabs and tube soles like the one we have got here. And besides, very important too is that you find on each slab the role each and every one played within the order of St. John. The knights were above the law, the ordinary laws of all Christian countries. They answered only to the Grand Master. The Grand Master recognized only God, himself, and the Pope. St. John's Co-Cathedral is the Valhalla of the Knights. Inquisitors' palaces throughout Europe have been suppressed and destroyed, making this one the last. Execution Courtyard echoes one of history's darkest hours. The knights put loyalty to their order above all other loyalties, and they welcome death as a gateway to eternal life. The main hall was the court of the Inquisition. Sixty-two inquisitors were sent to Malta, primarily to judge the knights.
as the authority of the Grand Master was undermined, the underlying fabric of the Brotherhood began to unravel. When Napoleon sailed into Grand Harbor, Fort San Angelo's guns were embarrassingly silent. here that they ended up their history actually with the oncoming of Napoleon here in Malta who drove away the last Grand Master who was Ferdinand von Hompesch. The proud brotherhood found itself facing its darkest hour. Expelled by Napoleon, most knights returned to their native soils. The watchtowers stand as silent guardians, outposts of another time. San Juan Capistrano, California, is home to Joseph Pierce. I uh, had a, a bishop friend of mine who came to California. He asked me what kind of work I did, and I told him I was a jeweler. And I always knew that it was customary to donate uh, a bishop a ring. So I made him a uh, beautiful ring, and every time that he wrote me, he'd say, today I went to visit the Holy Father Every time he went, the Pope would say, I sure like your ring. And he said, this jeweler in California made it for me. So I put one together and uh, presented it to the Holy Father. I said, uh, I'm the jeweler from California. He said, oh, I heard of you. And I said, I heard of you too. You know, and it was kind of a, a good meeting between the both of us. Joe Pierce is a nine to five working man, loyal churchgoer, an occasional bowler. He is also a Knight of the Sovereign Military Order of Malta. Seven days a week for five years, Pierce has shown up at 7.30 a.m. to dispense the Eucharist to the parishioners in his church. Yeah, I would truly say that I would, I would give up everything I I owned and and really do like the days of old and and make the full commitment. I feel I could do so much if the Lord willing. I have to always say that because He controls our life. Knights of old always used to return the uh, relics back to the church. During World War II, a serviceman found this uh, relic in the uh, bombing in a cathedral over in in uh, Italy. He kind of felt that he took it and he shouldn't have and he wanted to return it. So I took the relic uh, back to uh, Rome. I was with my son, uh, Ron, and uh, for him it was quite an honor to see his dad uh, going up and presenting uh, the relic to the Holy Father. The oath that we take as a knight is to fight evil 
and to defend the weak, which has been a pledge from the time of the Crusades to the present time. The future is going to be back in Malta now. The Maltese government uh, gave the Knights uh, old Fort St. Angelo as a training center. This is the new adventure that we'll be going into that I myself hope to be part of. The role of the Knights of St. John in some of the most critical moments in history has been the defense of threatened outposts against a tide of conquest. Some of their stands have turned the tide of history. The Knights of St. John continue their double vocation of caring for our lords the sick and defending the faith. Over the centuries, we have seen the order go down in what seemed to be complete defeat, only to rise again and travel a path that is quite new, but always based firmly in the teachings of Brother Gerard. From the battlefields of Outremer to the boardrooms in America, the Knights of St. John are still the soldiers of God, dedicated to the protection of the weak. The Knights of St. John are the last crusaders.
biex jiġi ikkommemorat il 900 anniversarju tal-Kavallieri ta' San Ġuan, inżammu bħalma rajtu bħalma rajna u dan il-dokumentarju festi gbar, festi ċerimonjali li għali għattandaw kavallieri min kull il-kien, kavallieri ta' l-ordni madwar id-dinja. Dawk kolla li parteċipaw inataw midalja partikolari, midalja li ġiet f-pawċ li għada. Jina, kelli iċxorti u għburi li għaxxol il-li kont iħat naħmel inatajna midalja u koll. Midalja li naħaturi bil-salib tal-kavalleri lekkim sejjah 8-pointed cross u naħal uħra tal-midalja turi il-grammastru ta' dak izmien. Il-grammastru fra Andrew Berti. Xaħħġa li jina nos, nos ħafna u nżomma ma' t-tezori tijaj. Jina zgur il-li jemmu ħut minkon, il-li umma parti mil-kavalleri jo kellom ixi membri tal-familja li kienu parti mil-kavalleri ta' San Juan. Jem forsi jo ħut minkon il-li wirtu dina il-midalja. Dawnu ma' naffari jizbeħ il-tezori tana tal-individni għalmu ma' tezori għbar daw il-filmati il-li għedin norukom dawna il-dokumentari da' kollu li għed norukom f'dan il-program l-ura f-zmien għabel ma' nsan milkom u nħallikom nixti nfakkarkom nix izzuru il-pagina taħna fuq Facebook u għamlu nna like għamlu l-kommenti taħkom nħin ingrazzjakom anki taħ il-messaġġi li tibaħtu messaġġi li linna il-Madrid u liri jituħna n-kora għġament bax jinkomplu n-tellaw produzzjonijiet ta' kwalita bħal din jina nħin ingrazzja li l-istat kollu il-li jajna bax jintella dan il-program fisem il-co-producer tiħa il-Madrid u fismi insalmilkom u natikom appuntament għal bħallum ġima. Saħħa. Album retratti, l'urra fizmi, paiz motivor, milli nafi, tit hapet mio, bla matrit, u kem nishti, impar alftit, li erġa dak izmin mil ġdi, li erġa dak izmin mil ġdi. 